Hi, this is Bob Kovacs, and this is a comparison of the Panasonic LX100 versus the Panasonic ZS100. The two cameras cost about $700 US at the point I made this video. They have many things in common, but there are also many differences. With a 3 time zoom lens and a maximum focal length of 72 mm, the LX100 is pretty limited when it comes to telephoto range. On the other hand, the ZS100 has a photographic telephoto range of 25 to 250 mm, and for video, that 250 stretches to 370 mm. This is 4K video with the LX100. Now it has a 24 mm lens, so it gets a fairly wide shot, even though we're in a cramped space, in this case, inside a car. This is the same shot using the ZS100, which for 4K video has a wide angle of 37 millimeters. That's a much narrower angle than the 24 millimeters for the LX100. So this is what you get inside a cramped space, inside a car, shooting with the ZS100. The ZS100 fits pretty nicely into a pocket. The LX100, well, it's more of a struggle, but it will go eventually. The ZS100 will go into the pocket of a sport coat and be there pretty comfortably. The LX100 is much bulkier. You can struggle and get it into the pocket, but then if you need to get it back out quickly, it's just not going to come. On the other hand, if you need to get the ZS100 out, there it is. The LX100 with its big micro four-thirds sensor and relatively low pixel count does very well in low light. The ZS100 with its smaller sensor and higher pixel count doesn't do quite as good in low light as the LX100. The LX100 has a maximum f-stop of 16, which means that when you focus on something in the foreground with f16, the background is generally in a little bit better focus than with a lower f-stop. The ZS100 has a maximum f-stop of f8. That means when you focus on something in the foreground, the background is going to be a little softer focus than if it had a narrower f-stop. The LX100 had a poor showing on macro focus. It looks okay when you're zoomed out, but once you zoom in, there's some blue fringing and the focus is soft. The ZS100 had a much better focus. It was quite sharp, and when you zoom in, there's only the slightest trace of the blue fringing that you saw with the LX100. I did another macro test, and the results were a little closer here. But still, the focus with the LX100 was a little softer. When you zoom all the way in, you really see that it has many fewer pixels than the ZS100. When you go to the ZS100, you can really see the fact that it has 20 megapixels versus 12.5 megapixels for the LX100. And that makes a difference. Interestingly enough, the LX100 and the ZS100 both take exactly the same battery. This is the battery out of my ZS100, and it will go into the LX100 no problem. Now, Panasonic brand batteries, if you want to buy a spare, they're kind of pricey, but you can get cheap knockoffs pretty inexpensively. This is a Wasabi power battery, and it works fine in my ZS100. It also works fine in the LX100. The two cameras surprisingly have different ways to charge their batteries. The LX100, you have to use an external battery charger. The ZS100, you have to charge the battery inside the camera. With the ZS100, you charge the battery inside the camera through the USB port that's under this flap. Notice the USB port. It's exactly the same port that's used on your cell phone. To charge the ZS100's battery, take the standard cell phone charger that comes with the Panasonic camera. Now this happens to be a charger that came with my Samsung cell phone. So just use it and plug it in to the USB port on the side of the camera. And when the light comes on, the battery is charging. To charge the LX100's battery, you might think that the procedure would be the same, that all you need to do is plug a USB cable into the USB port on the side of the camera and it would charge the battery in the camera. But it doesn't work that way. And also, the USB cable is a semi-proprietary cable. It's not the standard mini USB jack, micro USB jack that's used for cell phones. It's not any of those. It's something else entirely different. I've only seen it on a few Nikon and Panasonic cameras. 
So the only purpose for this cable is to get data in and out of the camera. So if you want to download your videos and uh, photos into your computer, you'd use the cable for that. It doesn't get used for charging. To charge the battery uh, for the LX100, you have to pop the battery out of the camera, put it into the charger that Panasonic includes, and plug it in. When the light's on, the battery's charging. Now my friend sent me his LX100, so he didn't send me everything that came with it. What came with the camera was a ring around the lens and a snap-on, snap-off lens cap. So he went out and got a three-pedal lens cap that attaches to the front of the lens and then opens like this. The two cameras are completely different with respect to their lens caps. The ZS100 has an integrated lens cap. The ZS100 does not have any threads to attach a filter. I have seen a company that offers a filter that can be glued on to the external lens surface and I don't want to do that to my camera. So the filter situation is much better for the LX100 than it is for the ZS100. The nice thing about the setup with the LX100 is that there's actually threads inside the lens and you can put filters on. Now this is a UV filter that simply screws onto the threads just like you would do for most professional cameras. And then on top of that you can put this three pedaled lens cap on and when you turn the camera on it works perfectly and the lens also retracts and the lens cap will hide the lens even with the filter attached. The two cameras have different ways of adjusting their aperture and shutter settings. Let's take a look at that. The LX100 has a manual aperture ring that you can set to whatever you want. It goes from f1.7 to f16. With the ZS100, set it to the aperture mode to adjust the aperture. Now this unmarked dial on top is used to adjust the aperture. Rotate it and you'll see the number down in the bottom left corner of the screen change as you rotate this knob. On the ZS100, it goes from an aperture of 2.8 to 8. The LX100 shutter is adjusted by this dial on top of the camera. It's got a very wide range of shutter settings, all the way up to 1 4,000th of a second. To adjust the shutter speed on the ZS100, rotate the dial on top to the S for shutter speed. Now again, this unmarked knob is used to adjust the shutter speed and you can see the shutter speed changing on the bottom in yellow letters. There's one more trick for shutter and aperture on the ZS100. If you go to the M for manual mode, now the unmarked dial can do two different things. Right now it's adjusting the shutter speed. You can see the shutter speed changing down there in yellow letters. And then if you press the up button on this dial, now it's adjusting the aperture. So when you're in the M mode, you can use this up button on this control dial to go between the shutter speed and the aperture. The cameras have interesting but different solutions for flash. The LX100 comes with this nifty little cube flash attachment which slides into the hot shoe on top of the camera. The flash is powered by the internal battery in the LX100. The ZS100 has a nifty little pop-up flash, but there's no hot shoe on top of the camera to attach a different flash. My final analysis on these two fine cameras, the ZS100 is perfect for the person who wants a high quality camera. It takes very good photos and very good video. So if you want a high quality camera, you want to be able to slip it in a pocket and take it with you wherever you go, the ZS100 is definitely your pick for that. The LX100, I think, better focuses on photography features. So if you want more adjustments, more fine tuning for your photos, I think the LX100 is easier and gives you better results for that. I think the LX100 gives you ultimately a little bit better video quality as well. And I think it's also a little bit better in low light than the ZS100 is. All of those things sort of favor the more serious photographer type. So if you fancy yourself the serious photographer type, then your $700 might be better spent on the LX100. The ZS100, again, takes very good photos, very good videos. It's pretty good in low light too. So it makes a fine travel camera with its 10 times zoom. You only have a three times zoom in the LX100. So your zoom, uh, you know, the zoom range is just not gonna give you what the ZS100 is. 
Now, when it comes down to my choice, I think I favor the ZS100 because I like to have a camera that's small enough to take with me, drop in a pocket, and not be very obtrusive. The LX100 is really not a good pocket camera. Yeah, you can fit it in a pocket, but boy, it lets you know that it's there. Hey everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs. Thanks for watching.